rock and roll is now Cotton Fantasy? Yes, released just a few months ago to rave reviews. It's now available both physical and digital in the West through strictly limited games. And I'm happy to report that unlike the censored Pocky and Rocky Rishrock, which I reviewed recently, there's no such shenanigans here. Anyone waiting to get their fill of <clears throat> fantasy? This version is unchanged. What's also unchanged is that this brand new cotton game is one of the best new shmups this year. So I've revised and updated my review for anyone who hasn't yet played it to show how brilliant of a game it actually is. And thanks to Strictly Limited Games, they've provided me with a free giveaway code for anyone watching. So enjoy the video, look for the secret code to pop up down below, then leave that code in the comments and you're entered to win. So without further ado, Fantasy caught me by surprise, as I wasn't originally impressed with the polygonal graphics or the early footage, so I went in with tempered expectations, but have to admit that I ended up really impressed by the fantastic presentation. The biggest standout feature in rock and roll is the stage design, which really needs to be seen in motion on a large screen to appreciate. It literally feels like you're on a roller coaster and not something I was expecting coming in. This is definitely a game where small monitors and screenshots don't do it justice. While the polygonal artwork is on the simple side, it's creative and well integrated, playing like an actual amusement park ride. That's really the best way to describe it. And if you're going to build your game out of polygons, this is how to do it. Instead of levels feeling like backgrounds and artwork on rails, they feel like a complete world that you're flying through, with perspectives rotating and areas opening, constantly moving and introducing new parts of the map to fly through. A great example is the flying battleship state, where you're alternating between flying up close, taking out turrets and obstacles, then zooming out and around, coming in from different angles and getting to see every part of the giant ship or the obstacle-based pyramid state, reminding me of the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland, flying deeper and deeper into the pyramid, uncovering new areas. I could nitpick that the actual character models could use more detail and animation, as they're a bit static and simple, compared to the detail you see in not only the stages, but many of the enemies as well. Every level has their own set of unique enemies, and rarely recycles anything, many of them being from previous cotton games. And special mention goes to the boss designs, which are outstanding, each turning into a much larger and more interesting second phase as the battle continues. They're so cool, in fact, that I would have loved to see them last longer, as by the time you reach their final phase, much of their health is already drained, and you don't get to see their cool new form for very long before they die. You get eight stages represented on a world map, and complete freedom to play the first six in any order you choose after completing the first. That doesn't include two bonus stages, which you fly through panorama cotton style, picking up T bonuses and playing a critical role in gaining extra lives for the 1cc. There are also several additional homage stages from the original game, Cotton 2, and even Cyvarrier, Sunvane, and other games, each specific to that character. That's over 16 stages. Talk about a ton of content and love put into this release. You'll be itching to try out all the extra homage stages as well. The bottom line is that Cotton Rock and Roll knocks it out of the park in terms of what you expect a cotton game to look and feel like, with stage designs that absolutely kill it in terms of how they feel like a complete world, instead of just static backdrops. Yes, it's all made of simple polygons, so if you're looking for old school 2D sprites or hand-drawn art like in Reboot, you won't find it here. But this is how polygonal games should be done, taking full advantage and creating a complete 3D world for every stage and placing you within it. Rock and Roll does cotton justice in making every stage feel like a thrill ride through a fantasy world and is absolutely its biggest charm next to its cast of characters. <laughs> Speaking of characters, the other standout feature of Rock and Roll is the huge variety, especially in how they drastically affect the gameplay, to the point where some of them introduce their very own mechanics and create a completely new gameplay experience. If you're not aware, Success, the company behind the Cotton series, was responsible for some other shmups as well, two being Cyvarrier and Sanvein, each with some really unique gameplay elements. 
They've included a character from each game here, and when you play as those specific characters, it alters the gameplay to match their original games. Cyverior featured a buzz or grazing system, where playing dangerously and grazing near enemies and bullets was the key gameplay mechanic, and it's the same here, replicating the buzz system by making it the key element of the character. You don't get any magic or bombs, only a standard and focus shot, as well as activating a temporary shield that makes you invincible and boosts score and experience you collect. There's also no experience level cap at all that I reached, unlike the other characters, letting you try and achieve as high as possible the longer you go without dying. It turns the game into a technical exercise of precision, turning out to be one of my favorite characters to you. Other characters from their other game, Sunvein, a shmup that's designed around a timer, where clearing a stage is based on completing it within a set time and killing enough enemies to recover the clock, and losing time when getting hit, eventually running out and ending your run. And again, it's the same here. You play through the entire game on a timer, picking up time recovery crystals from downed enemies. Run out of time and it's game over, requiring another credit. Your weapon loadout is also unique, with instant access to all three shot types that you can cycle through through it will, along with a dedicated special attack for each using a press and hold. Playing this way yet again completely changes the nature of the gameplay and is a fantastic addition. You have Umihara Kawase, the main character from the studio's most popular platforming series, riding a blowfish, whose secondary weapon is a fishing line that grabs enemies from any direction and lets you throw them out for massive damage and chain effect, killing large groups of enemies at once. So while your shot is not as powerful as the main characters, it plays much like the bubble mechanic of Cotton 2, where using the enemies against themselves and chaining kills is a key strategy for the character. <laughs> Or if you're looking for a very traditional shooting experience, you have one of the characters from Doki Doki Poyachio, a pretty obscure PlayStation Harvest Moon style game. She has a very thin laser shot with only added homing shots as you gain experience. The special attack is simply a powerful focus beam and she carries a stock of bombs. No crystals or magic to worry about. It makes the game very straightforward and allows for a screen that's mostly clear of distractions and flash. Though I personally found her the least interesting to use for that reason. <laughs> And of course, you have the main characters, Cotton and Apple, with Cotton playing just like her usual self, using red, blue, or green crystals to change and power up your shot, along with fire, lightning, or hurricane magic as your special attack. Shooting crystals changes their color, and yellow crystals provide experience to level up. Five is the level cap, and dying sets you back just one, so it's not overly punishing. Cotton also gets her fairy familiars as options, though you don't launch them out like in the original game. Apple is similar with modified forms of shot types and the same set of magic options, but replaces familiars with her hat needle, which allows a limited short range grab where you can throw enemies back for big damage and chain kill groups of enemies. It's risky, but a cool mechanic to see return from the older cotton games. It's not as flexible or ranged as Kawase's harpoon, but her much more powerful main arsenal in magic more than makes up for it. Overall, Fantasy plays very much like a modernized version of the classic, and similar to Reboot. It's not as flashy as Reboot, with a normally less busy screen, as it doesn't have the shot-splitting crystal, nor the huge screen-filling hyper modes of Reboot, so it does have an improved bullet visibility by comparison. Though if you're using a weapon like the green homing shot, there are some hectic moments where it can become tricky to differentiate everything. But these moments are the exception rather than the rule, and mostly in certain tougher segments of the game where I personally opt for a weapon that doesn't fill the screen with my own shot. Bullet cancelling is a big part of the gameplay with every character having various ways of doing it. Whether with bombs, magic, throws, or bullet grazing, many of the most difficult bullet patterns can be nullified with the strategic use of your special move. Not only for survival, but also for score, as many of the powerful attacks can be cancelled to create a string of rewards. The game is on the easier side when it comes to shmups, and getting the normal 1cc won't take experienced players too much time. If anything, it's very similar in difficulty to reboot in that way, but the scoring variety, especially with the huge roster of characters and playstyles, makes learning to play each level a completely different experience. And regardless, most of the stages are so well done and charming that Rock and Roll has quite a bit of replay value for the long term.
wouldn't be a proper cotton game without some great music to go with the gameplay. And I'm happy to report, they nailed it. Bringing in Hagane, who did the remix for last year's Blue Revolver Double Action. I'd go as far as saying there isn't a bad track in the bunch, ranging from simply good to a handful being phenomenal. But don't take my word for it, and check out some of these great tracks. While no other cotton game may ever match the original in terms of classic tune, especially the amazing PC Engine remixes by Tease Music, I'd say Rock and Roll comes in second over every other in the series. It's original, energetic, and fits the game perfectly. Kudos to the team and Hagane for creating an original soundtrack that's worthy of the series and the Rock and Roll name. Let's get this out of the way first. Fantasy performs fantastic on Switch, as good as any game at 3 frames of delay. I measured between 3 and below 4 at all times, including the frame added by my display. While I don't have the PS4 version to test, we can only assume it may look and perform even better. Rock and Roll is rockin', but how does it play? If you're a fan of the original COT, more so the simplified versions of Cotton Reboot and Boomerang, then Fantasy will be right up your alley. It's mainly two buttons. No defensive magic, fairy shots, or complex special combos to worry about. And it's no more a bullet hell than the Saturn games. Which is to say, it isn't. Especially on normal mode where the bullets are pretty minimal until the very last stage. It's much more a classic horizontal scroller, where the enemies and environment can be as much a threat as the bullets. So if you're a novice or intermediate player, you'll probably find the difficulty perfect, along with an unlimited amount of credits that you can choose to use. But experienced players don't despair, as the hard mode and beyond make the game a lot more interesting. I myself found the bosses far too easy to kill and less enjoyable on normal mode, and also opted for hard after just a couple playthroughs for a perfect fit. There's a rank meter displayed in the upper left that seems mostly based on difficulty mode and your power level, and it affects not only the hit points of larger enemies and bosses, but also adds completely new shot patterns in some cases that didn't exist on normal. So whether you're a novice or skilled player, there's a good difficulty mode here for you that isn't simply lazy in terms of upping the challenge. In fact, on hard, the bosses are far tankier and you'll easily time them out if you don't already have a strong enough power level to kill them first. The leaderboards also have a cool feature of showing which route each player took to achieve their score. And yes, your score does reset after continue. The roster of characters is the star of the show here, adding so many different playstyles and variety to the mix. Whether traditional, bullet grazing, time attack, technical, there's something for everyone. 
if it's your kind of game. You'll find yourself wanting to finish it with every one and unlock all the bonus stages and options. Some make it easier, others more difficult, but they're all extremely unique and not simply variations of each other. The final aspect of the gameplay that stood out to me is in the creativity of the scoring, again related to the variety of characters. Almost every enemy wave, boss, and waves of bullets can be cancelled for huge rewards. Throwing enemies into large groups yields large chain bonuses. Cancelling boss attacks or killing them certain ways does the same, and each character has their own ways of doing it. Scorers will have an interesting time figuring out the potential for each character. And of course, playing on harder modes with more bullets and tankier enemies will only lead to higher gain. And to top it off, you can choose your route, so it'll be interesting to see how that affects top scores as well. So while the scoring isn't overly complex, it has plenty to explore and will keep serious players busy even longer. As if the existing content wasn't enough, I've now confirmed all the extra characters and stages also available. Every time you finish the game, it'll unlock either a new character, on top of the several already from the arcade, but also a special homage stage related to them. Finishing it with Cotton not only unlocks the original opening stage, but also the main villain of the game, who's also a really interesting character to use. The special attack throws out a stack, almost like a force pot, only remaining deployed until you recall it again. I found him to be a very powerful character and great fun to use. With Apley, you get the opening stage from Cotton 2, Mini Dragon and all, though I was disappointed to find out that I couldn't grab the axe away and throw it back on the boss like you can in the original. Rhea stage for Psy Barrier has some great enemies and bullet patterns specifically tailored to that style of gameplay, especially on hard mode and extra, which adds large revenge bullets into the mix. Fine is from a lesser-known success game called Sunvein, but her stage is one of the coolest and unique of all. A race against the clock in an arena-style area where you control the scrolling, killing all enemies as quickly as possible and advancing floors until you reach the final boss. And Luffy's stage from Doki Doki Payachio has you flying through steampunk airships and enemies before squaring off against a giant robotic boss who's absolutely no joke if you're taking him on in hard mode and into his second form. So fantasy is packed with content. The menus and features are pretty basic, but also useful with a training mode that lets you practice any stage, selecting your character, power levels, and other settings once you've completed it in the main game. That includes all the homage stages which can also be selected. And of course, all the text in the game is completely in English, as was the original import version of Rock and Roll. How about that? Now, I was hoping that they might add unique cutscenes for each character in the home version, but unfortunately, it's the same story with Cotton, no matter who you use. And while that would have been cool, I can see why they didn't, as the cutscenes here are definitely above the norm for a Cotton game, both creative and fun, especially the really good and funny ending that I won't spoil. So doing that for every character in the game could have been a budget buster. As it stands, it's cool just to have it in English, something not all other companies seem to think or care to do for Western audiences. So what did I think overall of rock and roll? Is it the second coming of shmups? Well, no, but it is the complete package and a great cotton game. It not only deserves to be in the same conversation as some of the classics, but in ways is better than some of the older console games it came from. While not beautiful like the 2D cotton games of old, the presentation is excellent. The music is some of the best in the series, and the gameplay is solid. The character roster especially blows every other cotton game away, along with the sheer amount of content on hand. It's not my all-time favorite cotton game. That'll still reside with the original and its darker Halloween aesthetic. But if you're a fan of cotton in general, Rock and Roll doesn't disappoint and in my mind is a must play. And if you still haven't seen, heard of, or played the original cotton reboot that came out last year, you really should check out my previews and review for that great release as well, which you can check out right here.